Okay. Uh, welcome, guys. So, uh, hopefully, uh, you know what I'm saying. So, previous that uh, we talk about uh, pull back, push out, and uh, equalizer, co equalizer, and uh, product and limit. Uh, sorry, the products and the co product. Okay, so there, these are all the category construction comes from the limit and the co-limit and the co cone and co. Okay, so uh, let me just uh, using a theorem uh, ended uh, in the in this section. So see, this theorem uh, I will not prove because it's uh, very long. So if you're interested, uh, uh, if you're interested, you can go to find it online. You can go to find online uh, data. Okay, so given category. Uh, the for the following are equivalent. Okay, so first is that uh, C has all finite limit. Okay, so let me explain what's finite limit. Uh, finite limit means that uh, I already said right. So given any finite, uh, given any finite object, it has a limit. So that means uh, C has all finite products and the equalizers. Okay, so actually the equalizers and product are the same, uh, are the somehow like, uh, they have the relationship and the C has a pullbacks and terminal object. Okay, so these are, so this theorem tell you that uh, the limit and co-limit and the final, uh, the product, uh, so product and equalizer and pullbacks and terminal, they are somehow like, uh, the, they have the relationship. Okay, and then you can dualize this idea. So you get another theory and the following are equivalent. Uh, so all finite co-limit. So basically you just call both sides. So in the co-product and the co-equalizer. Yeah, so up to now, you know, category theory is, uh, is very uh, interesting. Uh, so co-push push back means pull, uh, pull back means push out. Terminal object means initial object. Okay, so let's talk about the zero morphisms. Okay, so before I start, that zero morphisms should, uh, you, you guys should intuitively think of it, it as the kernel, right? So think it as a zero, a zero map. So the ideal, the ideal example should be you have a group, right? If you have two group G and H, and the all if you map all the group G into identity, this should be viewed as a zero morphism. So it's the prototype. Okay, so now let me give the definition. Okay, so uh, uh, okay, so if you giving A and B, and uh, let's say give me a uh, let's see, let me change the notation a little bit. Okay, if you if, if you give me x and y and f, right? This f, so f is called left morphism. A left zero morphism, so you left zero morphism. Uh, mean, means that if you have any W, uh, any W, so let me just uh, using different colors. So this W and these arrows are any. Uh, and so you if you give me any G, H, and W, these are all any. So it's for any W, for any G, for any H, right? Such that. Uh, such as f g equals to f h. So basically, this means that if you uh, multiply f to the left, then everything becomes the same. This is called the zero morphism, uh, zero left zero morphisms. Okay, so simple uh, idea to dualize it. So you can uh, just uh, uh, dualize. So dualize, you get the uh, x and y. F and uh, you need to change this. So basically, that's for any Z and any uh, G and H, such that uh, such that you have uh, G circle F equals to H circle F. Okay, so now this F, this F, called the right zero morphism. Okay, and then if it if it's both left and right, okay. So let me just if it's both left and right, zero is called a zero morphism.
Okay, so example is that if you give me two groups, then the like then the the zero homomorphism is a zero morphism. Okay, simple to check because identity maps identity, right? So everything maps identity. Uh, how about set? So in sets, there is a there is a no left zero morphism, right? No left zero, right? Reason is that uh given any set, right? There's no canonical choice for X map to Y, right? So there's no zero, there's no, because there's no zero element, there's no canonical choice for F to be zero, right? Uh, but uh, there's a, uh, if you start from empty set and map to S, then at least F will be the right zero morphism because now it has a canonical choice because there's empty set, so right zero morphism. So in a sense, we don't have left zeros, but uh, for particular and the right zero, but for particular empty set maps to some set X, then we have a particular right zero morphisms. Okay, let's give a definition. So this definition is that, well, so sometimes we will say this category is category with zeros. Okay, so category with zero morphisms, no S with zero morphisms, but this is a notation. When somebody says that category zero morphisms means that uh, you have the following diagram. So you have A, B, C, and this A, A, C, right? So it means that any two element, any two cat objects, there is a zero morphism. So you have zero A, C, and then from here, you can construct the zero C, B. Also you can construct the zero A, B. And then the condition is that for any f and g from a to c and the c to b, so for any f or any g, uh, this diagram commute. Okay, so this is the definition. Okay, so hope you guys understand. So basically I say that uh, in a c you must have, and a b you must have, and c b you must have. So you have three zero morphisms, but then for any f or any g, this diagram commute. This is called the categories with zero morphisms. Okay. So that means that in each object, in each two object, you can define a morphism. Now you can define zero morphisms for two any to any two object. Okay. Okay, so from here that uh, we can define the kernel and co-kernel. Okay, so remember that in the group theory that the kernel and co-kernel are obvious, especially for the abelian group. So let me just, uh, if A, B are both abelian group, then their kernel of V just uh, sets in X in A, such that uh, phi of X is identity. And the co-kernel of V just B modulo image phi, right? Uh, image phi. So this is the usual definition in the groups, if A, B are abelian, right? So in abelian groups, there's kernel and co-kernel. So some people like to generalize this idea into so-called abelian category. Abelian echo, and I will not talk about abelian category in this video, but uh, maybe in a future video. Yeah, so my video list uh, try to build the step-by-step -step category. So after we finish some basic understanding, then we will we can spread out and uh, investigate a uh, lot of interesting category theory. Okay, so. Yeah, so if this if you have a category with zero morphisms, okay, then you can define uh you can define a kernel. Let's say you have okay, so f is uh if you have a, b, and f, right? You can define a kernel f. So kernel f should be a uh, object, right? So something here will be defined to be equalizers f and uh but if we like you need to give two objects, uh, two morphisms. So F is zero and zero AB. Okay, so obviously if you work in a group, then this is trivial, right? Because this is the identity map. So this is identity morphism. So this is just zero AB. Okay, and then you can define a semi co-kernel of F will be just the co-equalizer F and zero AB. Yeah, so this is, this is generalization of the co-kernel and kernel. Okay, so the kernel is object here because it is the equalizer and the kernel is object here. So in the group theory that uh, you can write it this way. So it's kernel is just injective and then it's mapped to surjective to B modulo kernel. 
Okay, so this is the special group structure. Okay, and uh, yeah, I think that that's it. And uh, next time we talk about, okay, so let me just finish this. Uh, yeah, so, okay, so let me, let me, let me just say, so in, in, in this case that uh, we, we have the co-kernel and kernel, right? But we don't have the image. We don't have the image idea. Okay, so let me define an image. So final definition image. So it says the uh, be a category, and then you have a morphism A to B, and then we know that we we say that the kernel of the co kernel. Okay, so now uh, so you so you you guys will get crazy. So definition says that the kernel of the co kernel is called the image of phi. And the definition, the co-kernel of the kernel. Okay, so hope you guys still alive. It's a co-image. Okay, so uh, yeah, so so co-kernel you can co-kernel is a co-kernel is an object, right? So co-kernel is an object map, and uh, I can, so I can ask about kernel co-kernel. It's called image. Okay, so let's go back to see, right? So. Well, so what? So now, uh, what is the kernel of the co kernel? Like kernel, so this map, right? This map is B map to this. So look, so this is co kernel, right? So this is co kernel. So kernel of co kernel is just image. Oh, sorry, this is image. What I'm writing. So kernel, like kernel of this map is just image, right? So because it's search, uh, this is the quotient group. So if you in a group theory, that kernel of this co kernel map, just the image. Because it's B map to B module modular image phi. Okay, so this is the, the strange idea, but uh, it's interesting. Kernel of the co kernel is image, and the co kernel of the kernel is called image. Okay, and uh, if you if so if you allow some generalization, then you can talk about so called abelian categories. Okay, see you guys in the next videos. <laughs>